Welcome. I want to extend a very warm welcome to you. Um, for all who are, are viewing, uh, Mr. Kwesi Asari is uh, giving us some, some of his time to, uh, to talk to us a little about, bit about his, um, his work and, uh, and his, his uh, country. So um, uh, you, I, I loved your video uh, that, that you had made as an introduction to yourself and to Kenti Cloth. Um, so uh, I was wondering if uh, you could start out by telling us um, just a, a little bit uh, more, just a, you know, just a, a brief introduction. So how um, about how long have you been weaving then? Oh, um, hello. Thank you, Katie. Um, thank you very much. Um, my name is Kwesi Asari. Um, some, some people may know me. Um, I'm a master kente weaver originally from Ghana in West Africa. And there are two weaving traditions. That is the Ashanti and the Ewe weaving traditions in Ghana. But I, I weave mostly the Ashanti weaving tradition. Um, kente is a very special cloth in Ghana, as you all well know. Um, it's hand woven on a traditional loom and um, designs and colors all have meaning. Um, you know, they're, 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 on, on a particular day where there's a, maybe a derber, um, you would see kings and, and, and queens, that is chiefs and queen mothers adorned in this very special cloth. And um, like I said, the names, uh, the cloths all have meaning. And one would say even that the, the cloth speaks because um, such, some, some pieces are so attractive and you would ask, what is the meaning of that piece? And, you know, it, ha it has such, such a profound um, meaning um, you know, connected to it. Um, an example which I never, I never stopped referring to, the piece that my father wove um, for the United Nations uh, Sajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, first president of Ghana, presented that piece in, in October 1960 when Ghana was joining the United Nations. And like I said, every, every piece um, has a name and has a meaning. Um, this cloth my father called Tikro Nkwo Ejina, which literally means in tree, the Ghanaian dialect tree, literally means that one head does not go into council. Two heads are better than one. And this was such an apt description because um, Ghana was joining the United Nations at the time. So, um, you know, in a nutshell, um, cloths all have uh, meaning. And uh, some of you may have seen also on the website that I replaced the piece that my father made at the UN. And I also had to give it meaning. I had to give my cloth a name and also um, and the cloth that we um, came up with, the design that we came up with was a junasa, a junasa, which means that my skill is exhausted. Uh, I can't weave anymore. And um, that signified perfection. Um, that, that piece still hangs at the east wing of the United Nations headquarters in New York. If you ever have an opportunity to visit and they give you a tour and you see that piece, that Kente piece is, is from Ghana, originally from Ghana, where I come from. So um, not to take too much of your time, I'm here to answer any questions that you may have, Katie. Um, um, and um, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to um, um, discuss uh, the, the Kente weaving tradition. Thank you. All right, of course. Well, thank you so much. Um, now this is, if you're watching this uh, live, um, then we, you're, very much welcome to ask questions of uh, uh, Kwesi, either on, uh, we're streaming this on YouTube right now on live, and also those of you who are um, uh, joining us through the Zoom webinar, there's a place where you can type in questions. And um, so I'm, uh, uh, we're, I'm happy to convey those to Kwesi. Um, you know, I, I was kind of wondering about the clothes that you're wearing now, are, so did you make that? Oh yes, this, this, this piece that I'm wearing, yes, I did make it. Um, it, it's actually it's, it's a, the Junasa design, um, not not the version that we we, we have at the UN, but um, this is another design. The version we have at the UN had all the different designs you could find in the Ashanti weaving tradition. But what I'm wearing now is just the original um, um, a Junasa pattern. Um, I don't know if I stand up. You'll be able to see better when I stand up. So that is it. And I, I'm, I was holding this strip also because the, this, this, this is a normal strip from the traditional loom. 
these trips are what we join together to make a shawl. And um, this, this, this is an example of a shawl. A shawl is four strips put together. So this, this is a very good example of um, a kente piece like that. This, this design is called Wagagba. Um, it, it signifies unity and it's an airway design. So also you will see that it shows only on one side. This is where the weaving is done, but this is how the pattern comes out. So that, that is just a little bit of technicality for you. <laughs> oh, wow. So does that mean that you can't actually see the pattern while you're weaving because it's on the right. back? Right, exactly. You, you, you can't see, but you, you, you'll be counting the threads. So you need to be very systematic in, 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 the, in, in your hand picking whilst you are weaving because um, you, have to, you have to take it off before you see you see the strip as it is. But whilst you are weaving, this is how it looks. I mean, I, I seem to forget always that you, you are a weaver too. So Katie, so you know what I'm talking about when I talk about the warp threads and the wet. So whilst you are weaving, you, you got to be really very careful when you're hand picking and counting because you know, you, you, you know, you, you know, I always insist that your work needs to um, look, look good. So, you know, Anything that is not pleasing to the eye shouldn't shouldn't even be, be thought about. You know. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, I, I actually I'm a weaver as well, but in the um, European tradition. And um, oh my goodness, I don't know if I could keep track like that. That's amazing. Um, now we have had a couple of questions coming. You actually already answered one of them, uh, which was how many panel sections are normally sewn together to create the cloth. So it sounds like like you said four. Um, that is for the shawl, but for the big piece. It's about 18, 18 strips, 18 wow. strips of the big piece, like what I'm wearing. Yeah, because it, it's, it's, you have to throw it over the shoulder and um, wear it properly. You know. uh, so um, someone, uh, Anne wants to know uh, what type of fiber is common for your cloth? Is, uh, yeah, I, I know rayon and silk. Um, although um, initially, back in the days, mostly cotton was used in, in, in weaving kente. But um, with time, you know, um, um, and I normally use rayon and silk because um, it wears very easily and it, it gives it a better finish. All right. Um, someone else uh, wants to know, uh, what inspires the colors and patterns you use to make your pieces? What inspires me? Is that the question? Uh, yeah, the question is, what inspires the colors and patterns you use to make your pieces? Um, I, I, I would say, I mean, everyday life. Sometimes, I mean, um, I, I look around. I think we're having a bit of a, a technological hiccup here. So uh, hope we get his audio and video back soon. Here, I think we've um, I think we've lost him temporarily. Let me um, let me see. I'm gonna I'm going to text him. Hold on a moment, please. Um, well, if you haven't already, uh, Kwesi did share with us a, um, uh, a short video that's on his website as well that uh, gives an introduction to um, his, his, himself, his, his weaving, um, the weaving of Ghana. And uh, so I, I hope you, it's, it's pretty short. I think it's like five or 10 minutes. And so um, I hope you'll have a chance to check that out at some point. Um, 
while we wait to hopefully uh, get him back. It's, uh, you know, this is always a challenge when you use technology for, uh, uh, for something like this. Oh, oh, thank you. Some, somebody's uh, furnished that his video is exactly six minutes and 29 seconds. Thank you. Oh, uh, can we share the link to his site? Um, it is, let's see, I think I put the link on the description for this event. Um, if not, I will, I will check and make sure it's there. And we'll definitely have it when, when this video is over, uh, uh, when, when the live stream is over, we're going to save it on the DAR Museum YouTube page and in the description, um, I, I will be sure to put all, all those links to, to his website um, and anything else that's relevant. Oh dear, I, I, haven't, I haven't heard anything from him. He must be having some difficulties on his end. Well, um, I'm going to I'm going to try something else. I'm going to briefly turn off my video and audio here, but I'm um, I'm still around. <laughs> well, let's, let's hope we can get this back up and running here shortly, folks. Sorry about this. Ah, oh, good. Perfect. Hello again. Yes. Hi. Welcome back. Hi, Katie. Hi. We are. Uh... You have me. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I can hear oh, you now. So, and... Sorry about that. My my phone got heated up because I was outside. So. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome back inside then. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um. So we've had a question. Uh. How many hours would it take to weave a piece such as what you are wearing? Oh, okay. <laughs> the piece that I'm wearing, normally it takes an, an eight hour day to finish a strip. So, um, you know, it, it depends on the skill of the weaver as well. But a very large piece such as what I'm wearing would take about, about two, roughly two months if one was weaving it by themselves. So we talk about eight weeks with very consistent work um, of about eight hours a day. Wow. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, um, so I was wondering uh, too, uh, how long it takes to set up the loom because the, the weaving part is one side of it, but then you have to get it all set up too. And um, I've, I've seen your loom. It has the, the warp, which is the part that's put on the loom is, is very, very long. Yes, yes, yes. No, um, setting up the loom would take about an hour just to set up those, the parts, the physical parts. But um, um, setting up the warp threads, and um, like you said, the walk that you saw that was long, that is setting it up in the heddles um, should take another two, two days to finish because you have to put in the asana heddles, you have to insert five threads each. And in the asatia heddles, you have to insert a single thread before you take it through the beta and then tie it on the, on the rod and, and, and pr proceed with weaving. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's that's quite an investment then in, in time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Allie wants to know how long you've been weaving. I've been weaving since um, I was, I would say, about eight years old. Um, I, I was playing around in the loom when I was very little, you know, since my father passed when I was very young. But by eight years old, I was weaving. And as I said in the video, by the time I was 12 years, I started weaving some of the most uh, intricate designs you could find in the weaving tradition. So 
you 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 do the math. I'm 57 now, so um, 57 minus eight, 17 eight. Is it 49? About 49 years. Yeah, roughly 49 years. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're very experienced then. I, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Deborah wants to know, um, do any of the clothes, uh, past or present, tell a story of your family or people? Um, yes, yes. Um, there's, there's, there's one, one design um, called Kwesi Ambantem, which literally means Kwesi didn't come early. Which, which tells the story of, of my family, the Asari family in Ghana. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, so Lauren wants to know if you have uh, clients waiting for your work, uh, do you primarily just do commission works? Um, lately, lately I do mostly commission works. Um, I, I, the, yes, there are, when I, when I do shows, uh, there's a, a lot of demand for my work. But lately, because I've, I've been teaching mathematics as well alongside the weaving, I, I do mostly um, commissioning commission works. Oh, yeah. Well, there's there's a lot of um, uh, similarity between weaving and math. Yes, ab absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, I, I always um, relate it to sequences. When I mean, I even do my workshops and with the kids sometimes, and even adults. But um, sequences is, is uh, series and sequences. Those who are familiar with mathematics would know um, what an arithmetic sequence is. Say maybe a group of numbers, but they follow a certain order. You have say maybe something like a common difference. So with that common difference, um, whilst you are weaving, you've got to stick with the consistency of maybe using two, two threads. I mean, two threads of yellow throughout your design as you are creating it depending on whatever design you are creating. But, uh, you know, I, I think it helps you to understand the math too better. And that is, that is what made me, I think, good in school with math. Because when I came home from boarding school, I would weave and then I'd go back to school. And uh, it, it, it wasn't too surprising, I would say. I, I took the math prize in school two consecutive years. And this was because I came home and I was weaving through, this, through the summer. I was just weaving and, you know, my mother would say, Will you come up and eat? Won't you come up and eat? And, you know, I, I was just busy in the loom. I was just gone and going to school. I mean, you know, with the math, I could always think about what I'd been weaving and, and it really helped me, um, you know, with my education as well. Wonderful. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's it. Yeah. Uh, well, Judy wants to know if you use natural dyes for your threads and, and do you dye them yourself? Um, no, um, I don't dye them myself. Actually, I purchase them from the local market. Um, there, there's a there's a factory in Ghana that dyes various colors, um, so that is where I get my my dyes from, my threads and dyes from. Um, and so Kathleen uh, uh, asked. So so you mentioned um, eight weeks if someone is working by themselves. Um, so how might the weaving be done by more than one person? Oh, yes. You, more, the, more than one person can do the weaving, but uh, it is very necessary that you work together because um, I, I'm talking about, you know, in terms of the consistency in design and even the lengths, because otherwise it, it becomes very difficult to join them together to make, to make a magnificent piece. So... Um, Yes, of course, three people can work. No, normally that is what is done. Groups, groups of weavers, groups of maybe four or five would you know, embark on a project like a, a large piece, like the one I'm wearing, yes. Okay, um, so Kathleen also wants to know, what is your process for creating a new design? <laughs> Good question, Good question. So um, the, the, the miniature looms that I have really help in, in creating my new design because um, I, I would play around with, with, with a new design on the, on the miniature loom before I, I, I move on to the big loom to uh, you know, try out what I've done. So um, yes, uh, I, 
I do that. I do that a lot. I do try out, you know, uh, a new design on, on the on the small looms. Um, um, those those of you I know, be, you visit the website, you see the small looms, and I, I do my workshops with the small looms. So uh, I do definitely um, uh, try to create something new on the on the on the small loom before I I transfer it onto the big loom. So. All right. Um, someone wants to know, uh, while you're weaving, are you are you with others um, or are you usually working by yourself? No, I'm, when I'm weaving, I'm normally with others. Okay. I'm normally with others. We play music, we talk, and, um, you know, um, it, it really helps to be able to um, work for long periods of time when you are with, with others. Um, by yourself, Sometimes I, I used to do that a lot, but lately I, I, I like to weave when I'm with others. Yeah. So do you, do you share your designs or are they sort of close, uh, like personal secrets? No, 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 we share, share my designs. I do share my designs, yes, yeah. Uh, so Allie has a couple of questions. She wants to know um, who taught you to weave? And then uh, I, think, I think I know the answer to this one, but uh, do you ever sell your work? Oh yes, I do sell my work. Um, who taught me to weave? I told you my father's assistant. You will see in um, the, on the video, Opeing Dapa. You know he is, has been very inspirational because I was three years old when my father died. Um, I'm sure he he would have taught me himself, but he he taught Opeing Dapa. So I think through him I learned from Opeing Dapa. You know, um, he he's still living now. He's 96, and he's an old man. He's in, Wow. A village called in Sawam, where I was born in Ghana right now. Yeah. So when, um, Ali, just so you know, when uh, last year, Kwesi uh, joined us for the in-person World's Fair that we had. Um, and so that's where I saw his, his wares. Um, that he, he was selling some of them. They were, they were just phenomenal. Um, you, you're Thank you. a very talented weaver. Of course, you don't need me to tell you that. <laughs> um, you. Oh, so Lauren wants to know, do you use the same type of thread to stitch the sections together? No, no, it's not the same type of thread. It's, it's mostly used sewing thread is used to stick the, the sections together because, uh, and, and I, I, I don't know exactly, I think it is nylon or, or the, the thread that is used for sewing because it's strong enough to keep um, the strips, you know, from te tearing apart. Mm. Yes. Um, and so then um, we've got uh, people very interested in the, in the colors. Um, uh, Deborah asks, you spoke of rayon and silk, um, that, uh, that it is pre-dyed color, and do you ever buy um, from other people cotton fibers that are natural dyes of plants and trees for a commissioned piece? Yes, yes, I, I, I would do that, I would do that. Um, I, actually, I, and not that I, I use rayon and silk all the time. From time to time, I would use cotton if, if I, you know, found some cotton and I I found some colors interesting and I wanted to um, explore. I, I, I would use cotton from time to time. So yes, I do, I do use that. Yeah. I've got another question about your creative process. So are, do you, when you're creating a new design, do you sketch a, like a rough idea of your pattern out um, or are you designing sort of on the loom as you're going? I am designing on the loom as I'm going because I've done it for years. I don't really need to sketch it. Um, sometimes when, when, when I'm designing on the loom and um, another thought just hits me, which normally occurs, does that happen. That is when I get, I do a sketch and then um, go back to the loom to try and, um, you know, imitate well, my sketch or my thoughts. And, and that, that does happen to me a lot. Um, when when I'm, I've thought of a, a design and I'm creating it and then something else will hit me. So that, that would make it imperative for me to, um, you know, sketch something on paper to help me to um, gather my thoughts. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> so I, I was wondering if you have, um, do you have favorite colors to work with? <laughs> favorite colors? Uh, well, um, uh, I, I love all colors. I love all colors, but I would say blue. Um, topaz blue is, is, is a color that I, I, I like to play with a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
students. So then do you, do you teach others? Do you have apprentices? Yes, yes, I do have apprentices. Um, my, my son is actually weaving now. He's, he's weaving, he's back in Ghana and he's weaving. And, um, you know, I do have apprentices. Currently, no, currently I'm not training anybody, but um, uh, over the years I've, I've trained, I've trained a lot of people. Yeah. Do, you, do you have, um, uh, Kathleen wants to know how many apprentices you might have at one time? Um, you could have about, about, about five apprentices at one time. Yeah, five, yeah. That five is the maximum I've done. Yes. And then so Ali wants to know, do you weave facing a window or outside to inspire the colors and patterns? I said that earlier on, I weave outside. I like to weave outside because um, that, that, that affects, you know, it's, it's a lot, I mean, it may be hot outside, but you know, I, I mean, I know outside is, is what I prefer to weave. Yeah, is unless that, of so course the rain and and weather weather factors or conditions doesn't allow. But mostly I weave outside. Yeah. So are, are, do you find that easy? so you're in in uh, Washington D.C. now? Yes, um, yes. Do you do you find it easier to be outside? Does, does the weather cooperate better in Ghana yeah. or in DC? Oh, no, it cooperates better in Ghana. But <laughs> I mean, look, look at today, for instance, it's, it's lovely outside. You know, it's a day I could set up the loom and be outside and do some weaving. You know, during the day. And uh, yes. Yeah. So you've you've lived in the United States for a while. Then um, uh, can you uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, you know, I've I've never been to Ghana, so so what uh, what are what are some things that are similar about the two countries living there, um, and then what are some of the things that are different? Oh no, the the, the cultural differences are a lot. I think I believe I believe that there are a lot of cultural differences, uh, but it depends on your personality, you know, and um, your level of adaptation, you know, and uh, you know. Like you were, you were asking me, for instance, about the, the weaving um, outside and indoors and, you know, back home in Ghana, definitely would weave outside. <laughs> but here in Washington, you know, you, you probably want to be inside because, you know, you, you don't know what's going on around you with all the crime and all that, you know, you, you just want to be safe, you know. So, I mean, that, that's just an example. But, um, the food is very different. I mean, you know, um, um, the kinds of food we eat, uh, I wouldn't say they are similar. And so um, you notice that taste buds are also very, very different. So, you know, it's, you know, um, yeah, but, but, but it's, it's all good. It's, it's all good. We, we're one people, we're one people. So I, I believe, um, although the cultural differences uh, you know, apply, I mean, you know, um, you know, and you should visit Ghana one of these days, and um, Katie, I'm, I'm sure you'd like it, and then you'll be able to um, have a, a perception yourself, you know, of. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to, what, um, uh, what would you recommend that I see while I'm, while I'm in Ghana? Oh, of course, there's so many things, I mean, you know, I, I would recommend you, you, you go to the arts center, where we have various forms of art. Um, I would encourage you to go to the Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum where Osage Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was laid to rest. I would encourage you to go to the Du Bois Memorial Center where also, um, I don't know, you must know about um, Mr. Du Bois. He, he, he left actually the States and he lived in Ghana and died in Ghana. He's a very, very renowned um, person you may know about and also one other place you you would have want to visit would be Cape Coast the slave castles um, you know where you know um, you know back back in the day talking about the slave trade and, and you know slaves being brought from there back here to um, the United States so th there's so so many places that you can visit when you're in Ghana and of course I've even talked about Kumasi and going to Bonre to see the weaving village, um, you know, and all that. Yeah. Well, great. Well, I've, I've got a, quite the t travel itinerary then. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, um, so you you mentioned the food uh, uh, briefly. What can you tell me a little bit more about what the the food is like in Ghana? Oh, okay. I mean, I, when I say food, I mean you know, like you know, like I I, I say that taste buds are different. So, I mean, a food that you are used to growing up with eating, um, somebody is asked to try that same kind of like fufu. Fufu is just a, a fufu and maybe peanut soup. Um, it, it's a delicacy in Ghana, you know, but I'm just saying over here, I mean, someone may find out, and what, what's that? What's that? You know, I mean, because it, it's just pounded, pounded yam, you know, pounded in a, in a mortar, you know, the women would, you know, do that. The men would pound and the women would turn it and it, it's, it's made into a fine ball and um, it's, it's had with, you know, fish and soup or meat and soup. Um, peanut soup, um, and, and it's delicious. It's, it's one of my favorite meals, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, we've had a couple more questions come in. Um, now, now uh, I got the impression that you, you dressed up specially for this for this video wearing your um, I did, your I did, I did. Uh, So someone wants to know, do, do most people wear their work in Ghana? Um, yes, yes, from time to time, but it's got to be on occasion. It's got to be an occasion, like maybe a derber or an outdoor ring, or maybe even a funeral. I mean, you know, and um, with, 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 with something like a funeral, you have to wear, you know, uh, um, a cloth that signifies mourning, you know. And so, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So it, um, what do, what's uh, people's sort of everyday clothing look like? Oh, everyday clothing is more more like um, you know I don't know you know about the the, the batiks and the wax prints um, you know people make them into shorts and, and because of the hot weather you know mostly you know the shorts and short sleeves and you know and um, yeah just make them comfortable. Um, oh, Ali has a question about what are some celebrations that that you. That you have what are some holidays that you celebrate in Ghana? Um, yeah, you, we we talk more about the festivals. You know, there there are special festivals like the Akwesidai festival. And the, the the various tribes have various festivals that they have at different times of the year. So um, there are different different types of festivals. You know that you know one one can. Um, participate in and really enjoy, um, like the, the homo by the gas, for instance, it's, it's, it's a celebration every year that they have at a certain time of the year, if I'm not mistaken, it's between June and July, and they have this special meal that they prepare, you know, um, that's called pickle, and pickle is, um, you know, is cooked with, um, you know, uh, maize and oil and, you know, and, you know, everybody eats, and, you know, they sprinkle some to the gods and, you know, they thank, you know, the ancestors for, you know, protection, guidance and um, a, a good life, you know, so, yeah. Wow, so that, that, that sounds like fun. I would, I'd participate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it sounds more like there are, um, uh, there aren't so much national holidays as they're more sort of concentrated among the different groups. Is that, is that right? Right, 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 right. There are national holidays as well. There are national holidays, um, like they have Farmer's Day. Um, we have the 6th of March is one significant day, you know, that is Independence Day. Because, you know, Ghana was um, the first country in sub-Saharan Africa to gain independence from colonial rule. You know, on, on the 6th of March, 1967. So um, on this day, this day is, for instance, a very special day in Ghana. And several other um, public holidays, which cannot come to mind now. But I, I thought you were talking more about, you know, the celebrations, the traditional celebrations by the different um, ethnic groups. Oh, and any of them. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, we've had another question about um, your weaving. Uh, would you, uh, Ju Judy wants to know, would you give some information about your loom? Uh, and where do weavers find looms today? Um, 
give information about my loom. Um, yes, of course. I mean, you know, I always want to share information about my loom. And uh, there are um, special carpenters back home in Ghana who make the looms. So if you really want to make a loom, um, you could always make contact with me and um, I'll, I'll, I'll um, um, direct you in the right direction. All right. So there's not, you can't like order it out of a catalog? No, no, you can't. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Um, well, I don't see any more questions here. And um, uh, so I, I guess we'll, uh, we'll wrap up with, uh, was there anything else that we hadn't covered that you wanted to share with us? Oh, um, I, I would say, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that you've shown an interest in my weaving. Uh, I always look for an opportunity to share what I do. And um, I, I, I love to weave and it's part of me and I was born into it. So um, I just want to say if anybody is interested, especially about with the, with the small looms and also the big looms, but please visit my website. Don't hesitate to make contact. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very open to teach. So uh, I, I think that's, that's, that's about it. That's what I have to say. Well, thank Christy, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to have you here. Uh, we're really honored that you took the time to talk with us. Yes. And um, yeah, I hope anyone watching will, will feel free to, to reach out. Yes. Okay. Thank right. you, Katie. Thank All you. All right. You take care. Take care, too. Talk to you soon. Right. All right. Bye. Bye.